Hello and welcome to this next topic of OCR A-level chemistry. This is topic 33, which is amino acids, amides and chirality. I'm going to start off talking about amino acids, and this is the basic structure for an amino acid. You can see there's a carbon in the middle, there's a carboxylic acid group, and then there is a primary amine. Also attached to the carbon is a hydrogen and an R group. Now for us, with our proteins, there are 20 different amino acids, and that's 20 different R groups the simplest of which is just a hydrogen, and that's glycine. You don't need to know any specific amino acids in chemistry, but you need to know that that R group can change to any group that they give you. And we're going to assume that it has very little effect on the reactivity. It has no effect on the reactivity of this acid or of this amine. Now, of course, it can also react. So if there is an alkene in that R group, then it can do alkene reactions. If there's an alcohol, it will do alcohol reactions, etc. So keep that in mind. But I'm just going to go over the specific reactions of the amino acids. So just reactions to do with this amine and this acid. And it's nothing we haven't seen before. So this acid will react with bases and it will also form esters. And the same as we've seen before, this amine can accept a proton because it's got a lone pair. And so it's basic. Now interestingly, you've got an acidic thing and a basic thing on the same molecule. This H plus can actually be transferred over to here, making what's called a twitter ion which is a negative ion on this side and a positive ion on that side. And what can also happen is, we hinted on it last time, carboxylic acids can react with amines to make amides. And so you can get chains of these forming, and that's a protein. So if you remember all the way back in GCSE biology, amino acids form all together to make protein chains. And what happens is this carboxylic acid group and this amine on two separate molecules will form an amide, and then on the end of that, there'll be another carboxylic acid, and that makes another amide bond. I'm just going to show you how amides are formed. We've seen it with acyl chlorides, but you can also do it with amines and carboxylic acids. Okay, so in my head, this is quite similar to an esterification reaction. It starts with a carboxylic acid and an amine, this time instead of an alcohol. And then the H and the OH are removed, forming water, and you end up with a bond between this carbon and this nitrogen. And this is what you get. You end up with a bond between the carbon of the carboxylic acid and the nitrogen of the amine. And that CONH is an amide bond. And you'd also get water. So I'm just going to draw this out a little bit cleaner so you can see what this looks like. And in biology, you'd probably call this a dipeptide. It contains two amino acids linked by an amide bond, which they call a peptide bond. And it produces water. And so in biology, that's called a condensation reaction. And in the next session, I'm going to talk about condensation polymers, and they are ones which produce water. And hopefully you can see on this end, you've got an amine. This end, you've got a carboxylic acid. So this one can react with another amine. This can react with a carboxylic acid. And you end up with a long chain of amino acids, all linked by amide bonds. And that is a protein, or at least that's the primary structure of a protein. All the secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure, I'm going to leave that to biology. This is the basic chemical bond to learn for chemistry. And incidentally, this is what we call a secondary amide because the nitrogen is bonded to two carbons. So that makes it secondary. Primary would just be NH2. That's a primary amide. And then a tertiary amide, you'd have a carbon instead of that hydrogen. And we don't need to be able to name those dipeptides formed by two amino acids joining together. We need to be able to name simpler amides. Like this primary amide. I've got one, two, three, four carbons. And so it's called Butan amide. For secondary amides like this one, this is an ethyl group which is attached to the nitrogen, and so the way to name it is just to put this bit as a prefix, and it's prefixed N ethyl. So it would be N ethyl butan amide. The N here is kind of taking the place of the number when you're prefixing, and so it's separated from the ethyl by a hyphen. What that's doing is saying that the ethyl group is on the N, the nitrogen and not, for instance, on this second carbon, which would be 2-ethylbutanamide. And 2-ethylbutanamide obviously is different from this secondary amide. So that is amino acids and amides. What we've got left to talk about is chirality. Now, I've come across this slightly before. We've talked about optical isomerism. And optical isomers are, remember, non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And that happens in those octahedral complex ions where you've got three bidentate ligands. They can be arranged in two different ways, which are mirror images of each other, but are not the same. And that can also happen with carbon compounds. So if you have four different groups all attached 
to the same carbon, those groups can be arranged in two different ways. And those two different ways are mirror images of each other. Let me give you an example. Okay, so this is the example. It's quite simple. It's just bromo, chloro, fluoro, and methane. It's got four different groups, the chlorine, the bromine, the fluorine, and hydrogen. And you can arrange those in two different ways. There's this way, and then the mirror image. And the mirror image, if we say rotate it so that the chlorine and the fluorine are in the same positions as this one on the left, the bromine and the hydrogen will be the other way around. So let's just imagine rotating it 180 degrees like this, so the fluorine is now sticking right rather than left. That would leave this hydrogen sticking forward and the bromine sticking back and left. And you can see that is not the same as this one because the hydrogen and the bromine are the other way around. And if you make a model, you can see there's absolutely no way of rotating this so that it's exactly the same as that. You can make the mirror images, but you can never rotate them in such a way that they are exactly the same. And that is called optical isomerism, and the carbon is called a chiral carbon. So this is called chirality. Now the way this comes up in exams a lot of the time is to count the number of chiral centres, or the number of chiral carbons in a molecule. So they give you a big organic molecule and ask you to say how many chiral centres are in that molecule. And when you do that, what you're looking for is a carbon which is making four bonds to four different things. So for instance, this carbon on the end obviously is just making one bond to carbon and three to hydrogen. They're not all different and so this on the end, not a chiral carbon. Same to that one because it's in the same position as this one. Now you might expect this one to be a chiral carbon but actually it's not because two of the groups it's attached to are both methyl groups. This carbon is making bonds to two hydrogens, so it isn't chiral, but this carbon is making a bond to an ethyl group, it's making a bond to this group, this CH2, CH, CH3, 2, and it's also making a bond to hydrogen and to this big group on the right. So this carbon here is making four bonds to four different groups, so it is a chiral centre. There's two different ways in which you could organise the groups around that carbon, and so it's chiral. And then we just move on. CH2 making two bonds to hydrogen. CH2 making two bonds to hydrogen, not chiral. This carbon is making a bond to all of this. That's one group. It's making a bond to a hydrogen. That's another group. And it's making two bonds. And you can see that if you go left around this ring, and you go right around this ring, they're different because of this group here. And so that is a chiral carbon, because going right is different from going left, so there must be different groups. Anything which is a CH2, as we've seen already, not a chiral carbon. And this and this will both be chiral. And if you look, it's the same reason for with a bromine and a hydrogen, and then going left and going right around the ring are two different things. Same for this one. And so this compound has four chiral centres. Each one of those gives rise to two different optical isomers. So you might expect 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so 16 different optical isomers. But those questions are rare. Normally, if you're asked to calculate the number of optical isomers, there'll be maybe one or two chiral centres. And I'm going to quickly go through the other question I've seen come up about chirality. This being the first, counting chiral centres. The second is working out how many different optical isomers there are of a compound. So I've seen a question where it asks for a compound similar to this one, how many different stereoisomers are there of this. And the way you do that is you look at anything which exhibits stereoisomerism. And the two things we know of are double bonds, which do EZ or cis trans, and then optical isomerism. So you're looking for chiral centres or carbons making bonds to four different groups. So this alkene could be E or Z, and that's because the groups on one carbon and the groups on the other carbon, they're different, each of the groups on one carbon, each of the groups on the other carbon is different. And so this could be E or Z. And then here is a chiral centre. We've got one, two, three, and the hydrogen as four different groups. So there's two different ways of organising those as well. Now we don't actually need to be able to name things with chiral centres. We just need to know that they exist and that they give rise to two different optical isomers. But they are called R and S. You don't need to be able to work out which one's which. This alkene on the end, by the way, doesn't exhibit easy isomerism because got two hydrogens on the same carbon. So how many different ways of organising are there? You could have ER, you could have ZR, or you could have ES or ZS. And so there's four different optical isomers of this compound. Okay, and that's everything in this topic for amino acids, amides and chirality. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you can join me for the next one. Goodbye.